people when they critique today, they say Christian, let's even say white, we'll get into that, but you even delve outside of that. So it's not just white. You're looking at masculinity. You cite people in Chile and Brazil and South America and a culture that's really known for their masculinity. But what you've noted is that it's not actually conservative Christian men that are going to church that are the problem, that are the, the ones that are guilty of abuse and divorce and toxic these toxic traits that are often brought out in the culture. You say it's an entirely different group. Now, who is that group that's causing doing that most of that abuse? Yeah, so I said I, I saw a problem and an answer. And this is the answer. The answer is most people don't realize that sociologically, Christian men are testing out very well. Uh, it was It's easy to find people saying that, you know, exhibit A of toxic masculinity is evangelical men. Let me read you a few of them just so you get a flavor of it. Um, conservative Protestant gender ideology can clearly lead to abuse, both physical and emotional. Another one, it's no secret that abuse is prevalent in conservative churches that embrace headship theory. A third one, the theology of male headship feeds the rape culture that we see permeating American Christianity today. Well, the problem with these accusations is that they ignore the data from the social sciences. Mm -hmm. Sociologists read these accusations and said, yeah, but where's the evidence? Where's your evidence? And so they started doing the studies. And it's only been in recent decades, so they're, they're fairly new. And I had to go digging in the academic sociological journals to find them. And so that's another reason I wanted to write the book, is to bring this out and make it public. But what sociologists have found is what you just said, that Christian men who attend church regularly, in other words, you know, really committed ones, mm -hmm. are the most loving husbands and fathers. So uh, they, and they do, by the way, they do interview the wives separately. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so what they're That's doing is, they're point. so what they're reporting is that the wives say that they're the happiest with their husband's expressions of love and appreciation. Evangelical fathers also test out as the most engaged with their children, uh, both in shared activities like sports and church youth group, and in terms of the discipline, like setting limits on screen time um, or bedtime. The evangelical couples are the least likely to divorce. And the real stunner, they have the lowest rates of domestic violence of any group in America. So and, and Christians don't know this. I, you know, I talked when I give lectures at Christian universities and seminaries, we don't know this. Uh, my, my sort of go-to sociologist, the one who did the largest study um, is Brad Wilcox at the University mm -hmm. of Virginia. And he, here's, listen to what he wrote in the New York Times of all places. Uh, he said, it turns out, this is a direct quote, Turns out that the happiest of all wives in America, you know, they're testing the wives because the assumption is that any sort of male headship or authority is oppressive, tyrannical, patriarchal. So the happiest of all wives in America are religious conservatives. Fully 73% of wives who hold conservative gender values and attend religious services regularly with their husbands have high quality marriages. So, I was shocked that the New York, New York Times would would print that. <laughs> um, and, and then he turns to his, um, Brad Wilcox turns to his fellow academics, you know, because that's his, those are his peers. And he says to them, uh, this is my favorite line, academics need to cast aside their prejudices about religious conservatives and about evangelicals in particular. Conservative Protestant married men with children are consistently the most active and expressive fathers on the most emotionally engaged husbands. So the bottom line is that Christianity or that Christians have a practical answer to reconciling the sexes, to use my subtitle, that stood up to rigorous empirical testing. And we don't even know this. <laughs> you know, um, this we need to get the word out uh, to encourage Christian men. Because, you know, they're feeling the same denigration from the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, when I told my class I was writing a book on masculinity, one of my students shot back, what masculinity? It's been beaten out of us. Mm. So, so 
many many Christian men are, st are also feeling this sort of you know the the gen the general attack on masculinity. So I, I I would love to see us be able to show that the the secular media is wrong about Christian mm -hmm. men, and we can show it with empirical data.